All right, hello, uh, good day. Uh, so um, the purpose of this screencast is to demonstrate some simple MATLAB uh, and GNU Octave programs that I've created to perform some basic MOSGED calculations. Uh, and so with the scripts, you'll be able to uh, calculate limiting activity coefficients of a binary system at a temperature of interest, and then also perform calculations over a range of temperature uh, so I'll show you how the scripts work, if that's what you're interested in. Then I'll show you how you can look at um, you know, other systems. Um, I have a Google Sheet with parameters tabulated that we can readily copy and paste. Uh, and then uh, we can you know, poke, along, poke around at the scripts just a little bit to explain um, how they work. Okay. So there's going to be links to three files that you can download, and then also a link to a Google Sheet with parameters. So the two M files you can download is the first one is Mosket Calc. Uh, which is just a function that's going to take as inputs temperature and vectors of our MOSGET parameters and it'll return living and activity coefficients of 1 and 2 and 2 and 1 at that temperature. MOSGET calc single is a script that'll essentially show you um, how to call MOSGET calc to perform calculations for a given binary system at a given temperature. And then MOSGET calc multiple uh, we'll perform the calculation for uh, a series of temperatures, um, so we'll create a vector of temperatures. Um, it'll perform the calculations, store the results to vector, and then plot them. Okay. So just to give you an idea, okay, so if I want to you know, perform calculations at a given temperature for a given system, um, I could use MOSGED calc single. So I would just run MOSGED calc single as such. All right, and so it gives me the living activity coefficient of 1 and 2, and then 2 and 1. If I want to do the same calculations, okay, so this happens to be the same system, but I want to look at a range of temperatures, so say 290 to 340 Kelvin in increments of 10. All right now I have a vector of temperatures, I have my vector of MOSGET parameters, and then with that I could run it. Okay, so for the single component or single temperature case, we store the results to these scalar variables, gamma 1 inf and gamma 2 inf. For the vector case, we'll store it at gamma 1 inf, gamma 2 inf, but now I use a capital G. So if I were to run this, okay, MOSGET calc multiple, all right, the result is, right, I have a plot, so this will be uh, component 1 as a function of temperature, uh, component 2 as a function of temperature, okay, and if you wanted to look at the actual numerical values, you know, so I could see them over here in my workspace, gamma 1 inf and gamma 2 inf, um, or if I actually wanted to display them. So if I double click on them, opens up in essentially that MATLAB uh, Excel type of environment. All right, or if I were to display gamma 1 inf, all right, I can display the values. I didn't display them by default with the script in case you're looking at, say, 100 temperatures. All right, so um, you know, I don't, don't want to clutter up your screen. Okay. So now to take an example of, of how I could tweak this, so I'm going to look at the single MOSGET calc case, and I'm going to scroll over to my next screen in which I have a Google Sheet with MOSGET parameters. Okay, so let's say keep the temperature, maybe, maybe we want room temperature. So let me change the temperature to 298.15, okay, and if you wanted to add some step to enter temperature in uh, degree C and then convert it to Kelvin, uh, you could. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete what's provided in my brackets, right, the vector of parameters for uh, component 1 and 2. And I'm going to go over to my sheet of MOSGET parameters. So let's say for sheet 1, or for component 1, I'd like ethanol. Okay. So if I find ethanol, uh, here it is. Okay. I'm just going to copy my MOSGET parameters. So that's V, lambda, tau, Q, alpha, and beta. Okay. Just going to control C. And if I come over here, I'm going to paste it. Okay, then I'm going to go over to my sheet and I'm going to find component two. Um, so maybe heptane. So let me find heptane. Okay, V lambda tau Q alpha beta. Come over, paste those in. Got them. Okay, so I could save that. And if I were to rerun, all right, I now get uh, limiting activity coefficients at. Um, 298.15 Kelvin for that system. All right, I could do the same thing for multiple. All right, I could update my MOSGET parameters. Okay, so if I had ethanol, 
Well, let me get heptane while I have heptane. Let's make heptane component two. And you could pick, you could pick any uh, components. It's just an example, and I'm coming up with this example as I'll show you the online calculator that DDBST provides too uh, that you can look at for comparison. Okay. So here's ethanol and heptane. Uh, let's keep this temperature range the same. Okay. And so if I run this, right, I get uh, you know the resulting plot. Okay, cool. Okay, and keep in mind these are gammas; they're not log gammas. Um, you could easily update the code to give you log gammas instead of gammas. Okay, and so it'll you know comment on. So the code is validated by comparing to uh, online calculator uh, provided by DDBST. All right, so if I wanted, let's see, I have ethanol, heptane from 290 to 340, right? I have this case. So you can choose your components from a drop down, specify your temperatures as a list, and then click calculate. Uh, and here in this case, it'll actually display uh, values. Okay, cool. All right, but that is, you know, one of the same as essentially doing this. Okay, cool. Uh, the only thing I'll, I'll point out is the notation on the Decimal website is a little confusing. All right, so here my big gamma is for ethanol um, in heptane. So for component one, this would be limited activity coefficient of component two uh, in component one. So the notation is a little odd. All right, on the Decimal website they call it two solved in one. All right, so they say heptane and ethanol, uh, even though essentially it's it's the reverse case. Okay. But uh, let me go ahead and close that. So to give you an idea of how it works, okay, in this MOSCID calc, so it's a function that you can, you know, update and use as you will. Uh, and a lot of our work, what we actually do is we regress MOSCID parameters. Um, and at heart is nothing more than this calculator, right? So when I use my optimizer, I write a function so that for a given set of MOSCID parameters, I can calculate a range of limiting activity coefficients. And then my optimizer is going to keep iterating on those uh, guessed uh, Mosca parameters to you know minimize the value of my objective function, all right? And so all this is is a simple top function, all right? That takes as inputs temperature and your Mosca parameters for component one two, returns the gammas of the two components, and then all that happens is it calls this helper function Mosca gamma two inf, and so I call it gamma two in infinite dilution because that's the notation used in all the Mosca papers. Um, so two typically being the solute. And then it just walks through uh, the series of calculations um, that are presented and all of that work, all right? Starting with unpacking those MOSCID uh, vectors um, to make clear what exactly those variables are uh, when I perform the calculations, okay? Uh, but that's it, okay? Again, there'll be a link to this Google Sheet provided online, uh, so you can just copy and paste parameters, okay? Um, you know, I'll update this and include a sheet with ionic liquid parameters, right? So um, I'll rename this organic compounds. And then once all of our ionic liquid stuff, um, you know, gets published, um, I'll create a new sheet with all of our um, ionic liquid parameters. Uh, I think we currently have 33 published, uh, 66 are under review. And so I'll get all of those uh, up here uh, as soon as that's through. Um, the one thing I'll point out is for, um, Remember, there's 130 organic compounds plus water. We have two rows for water, all right? And so what this is, is in the original 2005 parameterization. Uh, so what we discovered is the water parameters were regressed using only data wherein water was a solvent, okay? And so that's not so much an issue in itself, all right? But where you need to be careful is in the fitting process, they allowed the molar volume to be an adjustable parameter. And so what happened was they essentially increased the molar volume of water. The effect this has is it decreases the combinatorial term, right? And decreasing the combinatorial term uh, for water makes sense, right? After all, NRTL, which has no combinatorial term, is, you know, kind of the go-to method or the best method for correlating um, activity coefficients in aqueous systems, right? And, and so, you know, this makes sense. The problem, though, is if water is a solute, um, then the molar volume serves to scale the residual term. So by increasing that molar volume, they uh, effectively increase the residual term um, too much for the case of water as a solute. 
And so in this water modified, um, what we did in um, some work is we refit water, but using data where water is both a solute and a solvent. And so we get a slightly smaller uh, molar volume. Okay. And so um, you can check out um, our MOSCA presentation. Um, you can send me any emails with questions, um, but, uh, but that's it. Um, and in due time, we'll add programs where you can do calculations with MOSCID and use it to get BIPs uh, and perform phase equilibria calculations uh, with them. All right, but thank you.